Smoke and Performance. This is the Upper Room with Joe Kelly here at WVOF 88.5 in Fairfield, Connecticut, and we're with you until 8 o'clock this evening celebrating the music of Minneapolis. And our next guest, uh, although he's not out in Minneapolis now, but he's got his uh, pulse working with a lot of the cats who, who've been out there, and um, he is a funkster, a great, phenomenal guitarist, uh, one of the original members of the SOS band, and uh, currently the guitarist with Maceo Parker. His name is Bruno Spate, and we welcome uh, him on one of his uh, free moments, which are which are kind of rare nowadays, right? How you doing, Bruno? Hey, how you doing, Joe? Yeah, pleasure to have you on after all these years of uh, really admiring your great guitar playing. So, thank you yeah. so much. Yeah, man, thanks for inviting me, man. It's good to be on the air. Yeah, so so uh, home for you uh, is down south in Georgia, right? Right. I'm right outside of Atlanta, Georgia. It's a small town called Ellenwood, Georgia. Uh-huh. So so you grew up um, in the Georgia area? Yeah, no, I've actually just been living here for about 28 years. I was actually born in a small town of Kinston, Kinston North Carolina. Okay. And I lived in the North Carolina area for about 20 years. How about uh, when you first got into music? Can uh, you take us back to those days when, when you were getting into music? And was it the, gu- the guitar at first? Yeah, um, guitar was always, always my first love. I uh, actually started playing in high school. Uh, I was a band director at the school. I used to take the young kids out on the weekends and let them gig. But anyway, hang around the big band in the band room. I learned how to read and, and do stuff like that, you know, on a professional tip. So when most kids would, you know, have their gigs, part-time gigs, at, at the fast food places, I was out playing my guitar on the weekends. Mm-hmm. So I've been playing since I was about 15. And how, how about that first band what, that you can remember? What, what was the, the name of The first band, uh, I'll tell you what, they used, and then we used to make money. Uh, it, was, it was a group called the Soulfish Brothers. Okay. Out of Fayetteville, North Carolina. And what kind, <laughs> of, what kind of music were you playing back then? Uh, it was uh, R&B music. It was R&B stuff, funky uh, stuff, you know. But we were out, mind you, the whole band were, we were composed of uh, a bunch of high school kids. Uh-huh. So it was, it was, you know, kept us everybody out of trouble, you know, and it also gave us an opportunity to make some money. Right, right. You know, at the same time. So, so uh, Bruno Spate, great guitarist, is my special guest, and uh, Bruno uh, was a member of the band, the SOS band, one of our favorite bands. And uh, how how did you uh, get together with uh, the folks in the SOS band? Um, when I, when I moved to Atlanta um, in seventy. 77, um, they had a million and one clubs down here, man, and a million and one bands. At that time, SOS, before SOS was SOS, they were called Santa Monica. Okay. Santa Monica band. And Santa Monica band was the house band for a particular club called Lamar's Rigorum. And what was so unique about this particular club was that it was one of the few after-hour clubs that you could go to and hear live entertainment six nights a week. So what happened, I happened to go through there on the jam sessions, which happened to be on Saturday, Saturday afternoon, and I sat in, and the leader, Jason Brand, said, hey, man, we like the way you play, blah, blah, could you come back later on the night? So I came back later on the night, and I complimented the group pretty good, you know, what I was doing, because I already had a good top player, Mr. Reggie Ward, mm-hmm. who's uh, currently with SOS now. And it was, the rest is just history, man. Uh, the producer came in from L.A. Uh, we signed a deal with Taboo Records. Uh, maybe we can do it to get time to do it right. Boom, boom. It came out, and the rest is history. And you guys made some great records out, you know. Uh, how, how was the uh, the first contact with Flight Time and Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis? Oh, it was, it was, it was outstanding. Uh, actually, what happened... What happened? It snowed. Well, what happened? This is really what happened. This is it legend. Snowed the, it snowed the weekend. They were here cutting that, 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 that uh, finishing up the album, right? Uh-huh. And I don't, I think their, their boss, Prince, was unaware of the fact that they were working on the project. I think they had a few days off. Right, they right. They with Prince. They slipped into Atlanta. We were, we were working. And what happened, it snowed, which mm-hmm. was very unusual, very rare. Uh-huh. But they had snow. You know what I'm saying? That time of year. And, 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 they got, and they missed the gig. I think they had a gig out on the West Coast of Phoenix somewhere. They missed the gig. Right. And so that brought about, uh, you, well, you know the circumstances. Right, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so uh, 
uh, anyway, the rest is history, man. Just be good to me, and, and those guys are great, man. I I really dug working with those guys. They're, they're, they're workaholics. Yeah. They're productive. And, and I'm sure uh, it's sure it's a, a good laugh thinking back to what it was then as, you know, you guys have, uh, you know, dipped years later now, and especially uh, Jimmy and Terry and Prince. You know, right. And the way right. it turned. Destiny yeah. is something else, isn't it? Oh yeah, and, and and yourself. Come on, you give yourself yeah. credit too. Yeah. So so yeah. Work, working with uh, Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis in the studio as a, as a guitarist, uh, what's that like as them as producers and, and letting you do your thing on the guitar? Um, I enjoyed it. It was fun. I had I had more freedom to do what I whatever I wanted to do more so than most people. Mm -hmm. I put it that way. Right, right. Because they were very. Uh, uh, I don't know what I'm looking for. Anyway, the very particular in the sound that they were looking for, right, and part right. and the part that they were looking for mm -hmm. on record. But I, I was uh, fortunate. I, I had uh, more freedom. They allowed me to have a lot of freedom uh, to do anything that I wanted to do when it came to uh, playing the guitar parts. Right. Um. Down. Yeah, that kind of thing. And the funny thing about it, before we get before we get into the jam loose thing, uh, it's funny that. On the first hit record, Maceo, my, my current boss, my right. current employee, Maceo Parker, mm -hmm. he played on the first hit LP. Oh, really? Okay. Right, the horny horn. Uh huh. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And that was I, I thought that was weird. You know, as in the news, you know, Fred Wesley, Maceo Parker. Uh, I don't know if Chris was in that unit, um, but it might have been this other guy. Anyway, on top of it, but it was the horny horns. Okay. And lo yeah. and behold, little did I know years. A few years later, I'd be working with guys. I had wow. no idea. Now that, that's that's a trip, yeah. Right, yeah. right, right. Well, if you just tuned in right now on, on The Upper Room with Joe Kelly and WVOF, my special guest, guest is uh, guitarist extraordinaire Mr. Bruno Spate. You can catch him uh, very, very shortly. I believe you're playing out in April in Colorado. And uh, also uh, an extensive European tour and hopefully coming back to the States to do a bunch of gigs. Um, you can go to Maceo.com for all the latest tour information, and we'll talk about working with Maceo and also uh, the new album, if, if, if we can delve a little into it. We don't have the new album, but we can talk a little bit about it. But uh, right now, this, this was the summer jam right here. I'm going to get into from the SOS band, Tell Me If You Still Care, <laughs> from you guys. Yeah, we, we love to hear in Connecticut, so I know it's oh, going to make a lot of people happy with this one. And uh, we'll come back and speak uh, once again with my special guest. True honor to have him on the show, Bruno Spate. And we want to send that jam out to uh, the folks on Stratford Avenue and Seaside Park. I know they're always loving that from the SOS band featuring my special guest right now, Bruno Spate, playing guitar with the SOS band. And uh, Bruno and I were talking a little bit about his tenure with the SOS band. And, and towards the end, uh, when, when did you start going off in your... Uh, own direction, working with other things, and eventually with uh, Maceo Parker? Well, uh, it was around about 91, I actually started working with Mr. Parker. We were both were working for Bobby Bird, mm -hmm. who used to work for James Brown. All of them used to play for James Brown. So during the uh, uh, couple of tours, I worked with Bobby Bird. Uh, Maceo said, hey, man, you're kind of serious about this thing. Blah, 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 blah. I might have an opening for you. You know, I said, well, yeah, I'm game, you know, because uh, at that point in time, his, his, his guitar player was Rodney Jones. Okay. And Mr. Jones was on Apollo, and I think they had to do a taping that season. And he couldn't do this particular six-week tour that Mr. Parker was booked on. So he asked me, was I available? I said, yeah, sure. And then the rest is history. I think I've been with Mr. Parker now for about 13 years. Wow, and worked on all, all the records. Seems like Maceo releases uh, a record uh, every every year or every other year. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Pretty so much. so a, as far as touring, I, I mean, Maceo Parker and the band are, are constantly on the road. Um, do, you, do you enjoy that as a musician? And, uh, you know, how about for family and, and all the adjusting like that? How, how is it uh, for your yeah. family touring? We, we love it. We uh, love it. The, the guys, I mean, at, at one point we were doing about we had to be doing about 260, 270 gigs a year. Wow. You know, that's a lot of work. So actually the guys on the, the guys in the band were actually spending more time with each other than they were with their family. So mm -hmm. we, we became family. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? 
But it, and, and, it's, and it's a good thing when you find that, that chemistry that works like that and you don't have without incident and you can get the job done. We're the unit. We love to work. Mm-hmm. We love to funk you, believe me. Oh, yeah. This is I, what we do. <laughs> I remember, uh, you know, thinking back to, you know, one of the several times I've seen you guys play is uh, at the Montreal Jazz Fest and uh, Maceo was having a good time cracking, you know, with the, with the, is the phrase 98% funk, 2% jazz or something of that. And, right. and having a good time with the crowd, but you guys put on, you know, and, and it's like that every night. It seems with you guys, you know, you come out there, incredible musicians, and the crowd is so much into you, um, man. And, and let me ask you, I, I never got a chance to talk to you about this, but your guitar playing with, along the fretboard um, is that a unique technique you use? I, I don't know, if, even though you know what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, okay. Uh, with the right hand up on the neck, I yeah, know yeah. What you mean. Uh, it's not a tactic technique. Um, it's, I haven't seen any guitar players do that extensively uh, on the rhythm tip. Okay. Uh, I've kind of like refined that. And if you give me a few months, just a few months, I have an instructional video that will come out and tell you everything that you need to know about that. Oh, wow. So that'd be And nice. it's going to be coming out along with my CD. Yeah, that's what we want to hear. Time. You yeah. see what I'm saying? So uh, give me a few, give me a few months, and, and that's going to come into play. But I have all that set up in place. But it is that it is a pretty much a signature technique style that I check with other guitar players. And say, man, I haven't seen anybody do that. I can't do that. And it just took some time to really develop that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that particular strumming technique. So, so, so Bruno, that means you just committed yourself to another interview when that new CD is ready to drop for you. <laughs> I got no problem with it. <laughs> right. Hey, let's let's apex this thing. No problem. Right, right. Yeah. And uh, you know, Maceo Parker and uh the band, they've got a new C D out. It, i believe it's uh, out in Europe or just about called Schools yeah, In. Just, exactly. Schools In just came out in Europe. Okay. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So so we don't have the C D here. Um I, I guess uh Natasha said she's gonna send it along, but um Give a, give us a sneak preview if you can't tell us what, what's on the record because the clips sound amazing online that I listen to. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's more, it's actually more funk, more intense. Okay. More horn work. Um, Greg Boy did some, some, some outstanding horn work. Right. Uh, right. along with Solo and, and, uh, Mr. Mr. Ron Tooley and, of course, Maceo. I mean, everything is just more intense. Okay. Just that, that much more intense and more funk. More, more groove. It's even more of whatever you had before. Now, now, how tough is that for you guys, you know, touring that many dates to, to write music and when you come in the studio, you know, get those songs laid down in a short time? Well, it, it is kind of difficult if, you, if you're starting from ground zero, but I think with this unit, it, it appears when we start, uh, when momentum sits in, uh-huh. it seems like it becomes easier to do for some odd reason. You know what I mean? Right, right. It's like a, it's a, a, some momentum that sits in, and well, okay, cool, we can do this, and we can do this too, and uh-huh. nobody's and everybody's cool. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know. So I want to. For some get... reason, it seems easier. I don't uh, know. Uh huh. Uh huh. So Bruno Spate is my special guest. If you're listening uh, on WVOF, and we'll be re-airing this on our 24-hour. Uh, network within a couple weeks uh, you can go to our website sign up for the mailing list and uh, want, I want to thank before I get in the next song uh, Rebecca for uh, introducing us so that's real cool right and uh, right out. yeah right now we're going to uh, get into a song off the Made by Maceo CD and uh, features Bruno Spate uh, right off the bat playing guitar it's Come By and See and uh, tell us about making this record I know I don't know if you, you actually recorded in Connecticut, but I noticed one of the studios was here in Connecticut. But uh, how did this record go down? Right. They did, uh, I think they cut some, some overdubs at the studio in Connecticut. Okay. Uh, but when we cut these albums, man, with Maceo, man, we, we're pretty much done in two days. Wow. So, it's like, if we're on the road, the rhythm says we're on the road, we're actually done in two, in two different settings. Mm-hmm. And then it's like left up to the horns. Okay. To do that thing. Okay, you see what I'm saying? So this thing goes by very fast. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, we just did it. Oh, yeah. No, okay, great. Okay, what's next? <laughs> right. Kind of thing. Yeah. Right. So, so we'll get into this one. Uh, this is real hot off the Made by Maceo CD, Come By and See. And uh, you'll hear Bruno Spate playing guitar. We'll come back and speak once more with Bruno Spate. What? And that's from the teacher, Mr. Maceo Parker.
and uh, that's from the Made by Maceo, and they've got a new CD just out, Schools In, which also features my special guest right now, guitarist extraordinaire, Mr. Bruno Spate, and thanks, Bruno, for, for coming by, and, uh, you know. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, man. Yeah, outstanding playing, and, you know, a lot of people know you as playing with uh, Maceo now and, and formerly the SOS band, but uh, you got such a history, you know, going back, uh, you did some work with P-Funk guys too, right? Um, a little bit? Me, not really. What happened, um, we we ended up doing a few shows with P-Funk. We were opening up for them on a couple of shows. And uh, also along with the documentary that we did with Macy Overseas, uh, George Clinton was in the documentary. Mm-hmm. Uh, but other than that, studio stuff, uh, other than long, intensive work, that you know, we just did a couple of shows opening up for them. Right. And you know? uh, if, if you've seen Maceo's show, you know that... Uh Bruno Spate gets uh, his own take on doing a Prince song, Baby Knows. And, uh-huh. uh, you tear it up there. And uh, what's it like in, uh, digging into one of Prince's jams? And then uh, a- any feedback from Prince or, you know? Uh, no, no. No, I haven't had any feedback from Prince. I guess. Um, that must mean he no likes feedback it. Feedback is good news. Yeah, good that news must mean he much. digs it, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Now, now, playing that song, I know you played it differently than Prince, but tell, take us into doing a solo like that. Pardon? Take us into playing a, a song like Baby Knows and how you approach that. Oh, uh, well, I try to approach it like Prince would. Right, uh-huh. Except that uh, um, I might take it a little bit outside uh, outside the pocket a little bit, but uh, I try to think like Prince would think if he was taking a solo. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he's an extraordinary, talented young man, that's all I can say. Yeah. Uh, really enjoy playing his parties out there on the West Coast, man. Uh, <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's okay. right. You guys just played uh, after the uh, up at his house the thirty one twenty one things. Yeah, yeah, thirty one twenty one. The young man really knows how to throw a party now. Yeah. Not taking anything away from the the Paisley Park parties now. Those Paisley Park parties were off the chain. Right. So, so yeah. what what's it like? I mean, uh, you know, you guys playing up at these new parties and you are jamming and kind of like a home atmosphere. Um, what 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 kind of grooves you guys going and, and people you jamming with? Oh, man, uh, you know, it's like anybody can come. You, here's the thing. Anybody, you used to see anybody from Stevie to Herbie Hancock, and then Prince is going to come up and jam. You know, so it's like real loose. It's, it's no tension. Right. It's loose. And, it, and it's fun. And it's fun. And that jumps right off the living room floor, right onto the couches, right onto the floor. You know what I'm saying? And everybody's a, <laughs> having a great time. It's, it's, it's cool, man. Yeah. I, yeah. Hey, Bruno, I don't know if I could sneak in on your guitar case to get to that party. That would be off the chain, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. As, I said, next time I'll sneak in your guitar case to come to see that party. No problem. No yeah. problem. We're going to work something out, Joe. I promise you, man. Right. I like, can I give a shout-out to a couple of folks? Yeah, yeah, most definitely. All right. I'd like to give a shout-out to my main boy, Reggie C., out of Fayetteville, North Carolina. Uh-huh. I'd like to give a shout-out to Rebecca B. out of Baltimore. Okay. And my sister, Benita Brown, up in the Bronx. Yeah. In the, okay, in the, thank you. Hey, anytime, you know, just 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 cut right in, say hello to people, uh, you know, that definitely important in your life, so that's no problem. Yeah, you know it's true. Yeah. For for, for a guitar player, and we got a lot of musicians to check out the show, um, what, what kind of uh, guitars do you bring out on the road, and uh, do you collect a lot of guitars yourself? No, uh-huh. no. Um, right now, I own one hollow body and two two uh, solid bodies. I'm not pretty much a Fender man. I have nothing against Gibson, uh-huh. but uh, I'm finding out for this particular job with Maceo, the Fenders seem to work better. It seems like, uh, it seems like I have more versatility. And, and so you dig that. And how, how about uh, when you get a chance to... Uh, how about going on the road in between your own concerts? Do you, do you listen to a lot of other people's music, bring bring a lot of CDs on the road for you? Not a lot, no. No, no. Not a lot. Not a lot. Like you like to tune out a bit, right? Yeah, exactly. exactly. Uh, but let some fresh ideas come in. You know what I'm saying? Just think about me. You know what I'm saying? Right. How I would do it. You know, not a lot. Now, uh, Bruno Spate, very very accomplished uh, musician, and uh, we're gonna have him come by the studio when his uh, solo CD and instructional DVD video is ready to drop. I'm sh- I'm sure that's gonna be an amazing, amazing record. Well, what kind of uh, feel to you, for your own music do you have? Well, you know it's going to be funky. It's mm-hmm. got to be funky. You know what I'm saying? With just with just a hint of cool jazz involved. 
Okay. That's the hint of cool jazz, but whatever I do, it's got to be funky. Yeah. Taking yeah. a little uh, turn of the James Brown, Maceo Parker theme there and Bruno Spate. Uh, you're going to have a lot of opportunity this uh, spring and summer to see Bruno on stage. Uh, you can get all the dates at Maceo.com. I know our listeners out in Europe are very excited, and I uh, want to say hello to the funky girl at funkhome.com, and they'll be representing probably up there and cheering you guys. So um, look forward to hearing also the, the new record from Maceo, School's In, and uh, I'm sure we'll see you on the road and, and talk to you uh, this year here in the States. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Looking forward to it, guys. So what we're going to do right now, Bruno, is uh, get into another track in which you play guitar from Maceo Parker. This is uh, from the Dial Maceo CD. Uh, features Corey Parker on, on vocals and uh, Bruno Spite, Spate on guitar. It's Black Widow. And 